How birds find a mate and raise their young is a topic that is fascinating and diverse. There are some birds that are monogamous and stay together for life, and others just for a season. Some birds are polygynous, like red-winged blackbirds, with males mating with multiple females while he defends the territory of multiple nests. And then there's polyandry, the complete role reversal, with the females being more colorful and competing for males, and the male taking on the parental duties. Some examples of this are jacanas and phalaropes. There are three strategies, though, that don't fall into these categories, and that is what I want to talk about today. The first is brood parasitism. This is where the parasite bird lays its eggs in the nest of another species, so the host bird raises its young. Some examples of birds who do this are brown-headed cowbirds, common cuckoos, whitas, and honey guides. These are obligate brood parasites. They don't make their own nests, and they don't raise their own young, ever. They lay their eggs in the nest of a variety of different species, though they may have a select few that they prefer to parasitize. There are some ducks that do this too, though they are non-obligate brood parasites, such as goldeneye, mergansers, and wood ducks. They still build their own nests and raise their young. They typically parasitize the nest of the same species, though it can sometimes be a different species. This is still parasitism, though it's sometimes referred to as egg dumping. So the question is, what do brood parasites gain from this reproductive strategy? Let's take the first group, the obligate brood parasites. They are freed from the tasks of nest building, incubation, defending the nest, and rearing the young, and can put their resources into fertility and creating more eggs. By literally putting their eggs in more than one basket, they ensure that their species not just survives, but thrives. And most, if not all the time, the chicks of the parasite bird outcompete the host chick by hatching earlier and getting a head start on growing up. When it comes to the ducks and egg dumping, it's thought that it acts like an insurance policy. In case her own nest isn't successful, there's a backup nest where her young can grow up with a foster parent. This is why you might see a mother duck with many ducklings in tow. Now, here is a group of birds that is just fascinating. They're known as megapodes, which means big foot. Brush turkeys and mallee fowl are two types of megapodes found in Australia, Papua New Guinea, and nearby islands. Their nests are large mounds that they build using their powerful feet. Their eggs are laid into the mound, and the heat generated from decomposing compost incubates the eggs. But they don't just deposit eggs and take off. The mounds are meticulously attended to, usually by the male. He makes sure they stay precisely at 33 degrees Celsius. He checks this by sticking his beak into the mound to assess if it needs more or less vegetation. The eggs are unusually large, comprising 20% of the female's body weight and have a high proportion of yolk. The incubation period is longer as well, lasting about two months, though it can vary slightly depending on the species. The young chicks don't have an egg tooth to break the egg. Instead, they use their feet and claws to break the egg and get out. Then, they dig their way out of the mound and into the open air. They are fully feathered and capable of feeding themselves and can usually fly shortly after hatching. They never know their parents and are considered to be super precocial, the most of any bird. So instead of putting their time into parenting, megapodes put all of their care into developing larger eggs and maintenance of the mound for a longer incubation period. Last are the cooperative breeders. Three examples are Florida scrub jays, pygmy nuthatches, and green wood hoopoes in Africa. This is where there is one dominant breeding pair and many helpers who assist in the breeding effort. These are usually the offspring from previous years, and they help by defending the nest, bringing food, and sometimes even with incubation. The motto for these birds could be, it takes a flock to raise a chick. 
Cooperative breeding offers many benefits to all involved. Because the breeding pair has fewer demands, they can conserve energy and resources and allocate those to other areas of survival. They have less stress on their bodies and live longer. Helper birds gain skills in nest building, incubation, and foraging that they will eventually use when it's their turn. But there's a trade-off to this system. Instead of the goal being to produce as many offspring as quickly as possible, cooperative breeders exchange quantity for quality by investing more into the singular pair. Other motivations for cooperative breeding are that the helpers may not be old enough to breed, and there may not be enough good nesting territories or enough food available. So volunteering to help their parents is a good way to gain experience and have first dibs on the territory should something happen to the dominant pair. So what do you think of these alternate strategies? Have you ever witnessed a host bird feeding a much larger baby? Or seen a megapode's mound or a cooperative breeder? Feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.